Yo! What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the live action anime recap, Name Pending. The show where I will review some legendary live action adaptations of your favorite anime, video games, superheroes. If you like this series, smash the like button and I'll do more. You guys heard of the legendary anime slash manga slash video game slash toy line, Hokuto no Ken or Fist of the North Star. The ultra graphic, ultra violent, ultra manly series of the adventures of Kenshiro, a martial artist that wanders the earth blowing people's heads up. It's an amazing series. You should check it out. But wait, there's more. Did you guys know uh, that they made a live action movie of said series? It stars Gary Daniels as Kenshiro, Malcolm McDowell as Ryuken. Oh, the word cunt is a, can be a term of endearment. Chris Penn as Jackal, Dante Basco as Bat, Downtown Julie Brown as I don't know who the hell she's playing. The movie came out in 1994 and it was directed by Tony Randall. This man, he actually directed um, Hellraiser 2. So I really thought this movie was going to be extremely violent and I was happy about that until I found out that the movie is not extremely violent. So I'm not happy about that. And let me tell you this, as bad as you're assuming that this movie may be, well, <laughs> it's a lot worse. The movie starts after a long three minute and 16 second opening credit sequence. Man, in the 90s, they really thought that everybody cared about who made these movies. Nobody cared about it. If I was part of this, though, I would have said, hey, just cut the credits off before my name pops up. You ain't you ain't got to show me. You ain't got to show me. Do we get those long credits? The movie starts with a bunch of vague narration about predictions being filled, predictions being filled, predictions being fulfilled and all kinds of crap like that. I don't I don't really know if you haven't seen the original. You just don't understand what's going on. Trust me. It all makes as much sense as like the director's understanding of the source material. The movie's antagonist Shin makes his appearance and kills the highest billed actor in this whole movie. It's an execution. You can't even give us more than one good actor in this? Take one good actor away from us, man? That's selfish. One year later, somehow Shin has a whole ass city. It's just killing one old homeless dude in the shed somewhere. Got him a whole city. I need to know how. For, for a friend of mine. Meanwhile, 200 miles away in Paradise Valley, we're introduced to all of our minority characters. It's a town full of minority hobos. I can say that. I'm a minority. They all dusty and dirty. Just being dirty. That's all they doing in this city. Being dirty as hell. Suddenly, they're like ambushed by a bunch of mentally challenged bikers. <laughs> they all riding down the street like, oh, pfft, oh, pfft, oh, pfft, hitting them and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Gary... I'm gonna call him Gary. I'm not. I'm not calling him. I'm not calling him Ken for for reasons. He invites himself into this random old people's house. Just he just knocks on the door and just lets himself in. This is his place. He's staying now. I need shelter. And I kid you not, this man proceeds to just have night terrors on on the ground. He just says, "Hey, I'm coming in your house. Finna have these night terrors, and you ain't finna do shit." But I mean, I guess it was a good thing that he like did that because he was there to stop th this old lady from getting You don't give. We teach. I can't say that on YouTube. I'm going to have to cut that out. He was there to stop the old lady from getting I don't know if that was a good substitute. I didn't say anything. I just made a weird noise. He was there to stop a this old lady from getting violently stuffed by a group of mentally challenged bikers. <laughs> and now we get to see the choreography. And man, oh man, is it. <laughs> is it? It's just trash. It's trash. It look like this right here. What is this? We can see there's no hole in his mouth. Y'all ain't gonna fix this? Y'all should try and fix this, man. Two hours later. Uh, it looks like somebody spliced the gay porno in here. I like you, and I want you. This guy tries to steal some of Shin's sacred jam, so Shin just makes him bust all over the floor. 
Now, who's going to clean this shit up? Meanwhile, Gary's girl, well, not really his girl, but uh, the woman he's forcing to be his girl, she upstairs playing with some seeds and shit. You know what I'm saying? She just playing with them seeds. So after, you know, the town gets Molly Wop, uh, Bat and his little blind play sister, he's his play sister in the original source material. material. What is material? Material. I don't know if he's supposed to be his real sister here. I don't know. I don't know, man. Stop asking me. So they make it to their little house where they live in, which is really just, uh, it's really nothing. It looks like a, an abandoned thrift shop. We're almost home. The costume will attack during the rain, but next time, I'm ready. Greetings. And who do we have here? Ken, a.k.a. Gary Daniels. He just loved being up in people's houses for some reason. He just running up in people's houses. They couldn't find a way to get him to meet these people or do these things. He just kept on like breaking into people's houses and just meditating or having night terrors. <laughs> That's what we call bad writing. So he's just put there so he can cure this little girl of her blindness. So then Bat says she got blind because she saw her parents get killed. Can that can that happen? I don't think you can see something you don't want to see and then just stop seeing altogether. Can that happen? I'm not a doctor, so I can't say it can or it can't. Julia and Shin, they back up there arguing about some shit. I really don't know. I think it's detrimental to the plot, but I'm not really grasping. I've seen this movie quite a few times. I've been trying to do this review for a long time, but I just can't grasp on what's happening. What they're talking about is as important as everyone in Paradise Valley's hygiene. It's not. It's not important to them. They don't care. They smell. So then back in Paradise Valley, the town's being trained just in case the mentally challenged bikers come back for round two of the Molly Wop session. The Molly Wop session actually sounds kind of fun. You know, I'd, I'd kind of want to be a part of the Molly Wop session. We get this long montage and you see the people really training. They about to give it to these these freaking bikers, dude, the, about the crossmen. That's what they're called. They're not mentally challenged bikers. They're called the crossmen. They about to give it to the crossmen, yo. But the whole thing is, is they're not. They get Molly Whopped again. They get their ass B. It's like all this they're doing was a waste of time because a couple scenes later, they're getting the crap kicked out of them again. You could have literally have shot these scenes side by side and you couldn't tell which came first. So then Lynn just starts screaming. You know what I'm saying? She just starts screaming and shit. Yo, this little girl screams so loud, she gives Gary a headache. <laughs> I mean, she gave me a headache when she started screaming. This is why I'm glad I don't have kids, yo. So they take over Paradise Valley. You know, they all got everybody like all chained up and they in the cages and they, they vehicles and all that stuff. They just really just messed these people up and took over. But for some reason, and there's a reason I just skipped past it because it was boring. Bat and Gary had to sneak into Paradise Valley because they were out. They were out and they met up. Now they have to sneak back in. This, this, they sneak back in, this, in the Paradise Valley. They had to sneak back in there. So then Ken finds this little weird girl, and she's all beat up. She's been, been through some shit. I don't know where she came from. I don't know who she is. I don't know why we should give a shit. The movie is like, hey, here's a little white girl. We need you to care. But she's just there just to tell them where the little blind girl is. Her name's Lynn. It's not little blind girl. And then this, this little small little beat up mentally scarred little white girl she's never seen or heard from again she's probably dead she probably died afterwards because she wasn't needed so when ken finally makes it to lynn we get to see this actual fat white edp looking motherfucker and he's just bothering lynn and ken's like hey stop it stop bothering her i'm finna beat your ass i know you're expecting it to be another bland boring fight all i gotta say to that is You're completely right. Uh, you're completely right. Gary has a little bit of difficulty beating this guy. Or a little more difficulty considering all the other people that he fought. But then it just ends with him just, just winning. <laughs> Which, to be honest, I mean, Fist of the North Star is kind of like that. But the fights were better. <laughs> and then, guess what? Something happened that you would probably never expect. Fight somebody who can fight back, you piece of crap. <laughs> The Asian character is killed for no reason. And then he just kind of 
lets nice guy go after he just killed the homie you know what i'm saying just let him go just say hey you know you just murdered this guy um how about this how about you just go how about you just leave just leave i'm not gonna i didn't kill all these other people i didn't blew a dude's head up earlier but you even though i tried to blow your head up before i'm just gonna let you go that makes no sense so meanwhile 200 miles away nice guy makes it back he warns shin just like everyone knew he would about uh kenshiro coming to beat the shit out of him so then now that he has a second chance at life nice guy says hey i know what i can do there you are sweet dreams but heaven where is the shin fred i can't tell you that your highness but just say you have personal business to attend to what am i doing here Nothing yet, baby. I'm just going to steal some booty. I want to become a booty bandit, and I'm going after Shin's forced girl, and I'm going to take some booty for myself, because I deserve it. My head hurts. It takes like a couple minutes for Gary to make it 200 miles uh, away from Paradise Valley to, um, I forget what the name of the place was, but Shin City, Southern Cross, City of Southern Cross. I remembered. Takes him a few minutes. He gets there. We have like a Power Rangers style battle where he's just like beating down the guys and all that. Really getting 1990s Power Rangers vibes. <laughs> Climactic battle begins. And man oh man is it. Um... You know it's bland. I'm not even going to try this joke again. It's bland. The whole movie was leading up to this, and it led up to a disappointment. This was a very, very bland fight, and it just was no payoff involved. Doesn't make any difference. Ken's getting beat up a little bit, but then he gets knocked on the ground. Then he sees some weed growing out of the ground. I think he smokes it, and then he gets the power... And he just beats the hell out of Shin, and he just beats his ass. So we're not going to forget about Nice Guy. He's still trying to get the booty and all that. But the thing is, is that Julie, she ain't with that shit. Booty is mine. It belongs to me. You cannot take my booty. He's like, you ain't about to have my booty. He rips his mask off, and his head blows the fuck up. <laughs> I don't understand. So after Ken finally beats Shin and, uh, you know, just really fucks him up, he goes outside all beat up and he's about to get jumped. He's about to beat his ass. All these dudes that he probably, most of them he probably didn't already beat up and didn't kill. They up and they ready to be like, yo, we about to beat your ass. All of us. Same time. You So just when you thought we was going to get some more fights, Julia steps out and everybody's just like, hey, man, fuck it. You cool with us. I didn't know you knew her. I didn't know you knew the girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, you cool with us. We just finna bow. And then guess what happens next? <laughs> Nothing. The movie just goes the fuck off. I'm not playing. It just ends. <laughs> Nothing else happens. That's the end of the movie. This movie is beyond boring. It's bland. And if you want my advice, you should probably just stick to the original. If you try to watch this, you ain't going to understand what's going on. You're not. I feel like the director just was doing this in hopes that people that actually knew the source material was going to be watching the movie. But he butchered it so much that the people that knew the source material didn't care for it so that's how you kind of fucked up okay that's the end thanks for watching it thanks for getting this far if you have any other review that you want me to uh review what if you have any other movie you want me to review let me know in the comments and i might do it and if i do it i'll shout you out thanks for watching again peace <laughs>